Welcome back, Scott Gregg again from ProfitablePlumbing.com and the Tankless 101 article. Um, I am back this time with my third segment on the tankless water heaters back in the Gregg compound in the mechanical room. And I happen to have the Consumer Reports article, hit piece, about tankless water heaters. And I'm going to go ahead and shoot this full of holes because it's just too easy for folks like me, and there's plenty of others, that understand tankless water heaters and their features and benefits. And I don't know what the deal was with this piece or what the intentions were on the person who wrote it, but it's obviously obvious that they're clueless about tankless water heaters. So let's get started. They talk about uh, hot water heating in the first segment, accounting for 30% of the average home energy budget. And then they clearly state in the second paragraph that tankless water heaters were on average 22% more efficient than tank water heaters after discounting that as being a factor. Well, I don't know about you, but I would love to increase my gas mileage 22%. I would love to decrease my energy bill 22%. My grocery bill 22%. 22% is a pretty big number in every other circle except the article that this knucklehead wrote. Yeah, knucklehead. I hope you get to see this. All right, they talk about that translating into energy savings of around $70 to $80 per year based on a 2008 national energy cost. They leave a few things out for this, folks. One thing they leave out is your tank water heater begins losing efficiency the very moment you move into the house, install the heater, or turn it on. Because there's crap cooking and developing in the bottom of the tank, the elements are getting scale built up on them because they're running if it's electric. Tank water heaters, the most efficient they will ever be is the day you install it. Don't care what the fuel is, don't care what the brand name is, they're losing efficiency from day one. A tankless water heater, on the other hand, has a series of coils about up in here that heat the water as it passes through. And there is not a buildup. There is a possibility of building up a thin layer of scale over a lot of time if you have very hard water and the heaters can be serviced and get that scale out of there. With a tank, you know how you get the scale out? Well, first the tank fails, ruptures and floods your house, and you throw it in a dumpster and get another one. You can't clean it out like you can with the tankless. They leave that little tidbit out too. Funny how that works. Uh, the other thing, they never bothered to compare an electric tank against a propane tankless. It's a very common conversion with people that want to go to gas hot water and learn about tankless. If you remove an electric tank water heater and put in a propane Renai, for instance, what you're going to find out is you will end up saving anywhere from fifty, seventy-five dollars or more a month off of your electric bill. And you're looking at spending about two hundred and fifty to three hundred dollars on propane for the whole year, not month, do the math. Save seventy-five bucks a month on the electric bill, pay three hundred dollars a month in gas, you're going to pay for your tankless water heater and its replacement over the twenty year life cycle of that product. Plus you'll never ever again run out of hot water. So they don't bring those into consideration either. They said that with the help of an outside lab, they pitted Takagi and Naritz against three storage heaters. They did not test electric tankless, and the reason they give is because many can't deliver hot water fast enough to replace a conventional water heater if the groundwater is cold. What about the southern half of the whole country? Half of our country doesn't have cold groundwater, and those electric tankless water heaters, while never going to be able to equal the capacity of a gas, actually do a halfway decent job, especially in the southern tier areas. They, Consumer Reports just completely writes that off without any regard for any truth or doing any research. Shame on whatever knucklehead wrote this hit piece. All right, they talked about a lot of other things in the next paragraph and eventually got to saying they ran more than 45,000 gallons of very hard water through a tank model and a Renai tankless model to simulate about 11 years of regular use. So, what is this supposed to demonstrate? It's missing all kinds of data. How did the tank's energy use fare, fare in the later ends of that test after it had been good and limed up? They don't talk about that. How about the Renai's energy use? How did it fare after all that? Did it use more energy? I bet the tank did a whole lot especially if they had artificially inflated the hard water, which they admit they did. Here's another one. Did their tank fail during the test? They don't tell you that. Eleven years of hard water in the tank, it's going to fail, isn't it? 
How many of you people listening to this know somebody with a tank water heater that's failed, ruptured, and flooded the house? Doesn't happen with them or not. They will give you an LC error code or an LS error code, depending on model, um, telling you it's lined up and it's time to have it serviced. And you can service it. With a tank, you can't service it. All right, they claim that hot water runs hot and cold. This is my favorite. They said that tankless water heaters had a problem of cold water sandwich and that they were able to get them to run hot and cold by cycling the water on and off, the hot water on and off. No kidding. It's a tankless water heater. The first slug out of it is not hot. It takes about four seconds for it to get fired up. The cold water sandwich effect is a phenomenon that can happen with a tankless water heater, but it's actually fairly rare and almost never a problem in a house. If you've got a good model tankless water heater, you will get an even temperature within two degrees of set point across the whole operation. With a tank, you don't even know what it's set at. You set the thermostat at ABC, or hot, hot, or hottest. You have no clue what's coming out of there. So, big load of crap right there. Um, you can force a cold water sandwich issue very easily with a tankless water heater, but the way most people use their homes, it's just not a problem. Alright, it says, nor does tankless water heaters deliver hot water instantaneously. No kidding. Neither do tanks. Newsflash, doesn't matter what your water heater is, you still have to push the cold water out of the hot pipe to get the hot water to you. So this statement right here is absolutely misleading on purpose. Shame on the knucklehead that wrote this, yet again. Why are they attacking tankless for a problem that happens with both? Alright, they also say in tankless models, electric controls mean you also lose hot water during a power outage. That's true. So what? How many of you out there when the power goes out go, oh crap, I gotta go get in the shower? You don't. It doesn't matter. Plus, here's the thing. If you, ha if you have a tank, especially an electric tank, or a power vent that requires a fan to run, you may have a little storage of hot water for maybe a day, fine, but after that it cools off. You can't run yours either unless you have some kind of backup power source for it. With an electric tank heater, that's pretty beefy backup. With a tankless heater, you can plug one of these into an inverter in the cigarette lighter of your car and run it for the whole house. That's all the power they take. You can actually run them off of a computer battery backup pack that you can get at Office Max for 50 bucks. Not a big deal. So ask yourself, does it really matter that much? Do you lose power that much that it matters? If you do, get your battery backup and forget about this clause in the Knucklehead Consumer Reports article. It's not a big deal. Upfront costs are high. That's their next point. Absolutely right. Good things cost money. These are not built to be cheap. Do you drive the cheapest car you can find? Maybe you do. Maybe you don't. These aren't for everybody. All right? It's a high-end appliance. It's the truth. Every house in America is not going to pop for a tankless water heater, especially a Renai. They're not the cheapest thing out there. You can get a cheaper tankless water heater than one of these guys, but you can't get a better one. So you have to ask yourself, what do you want? If you don't care about the features or benefits of a tankless, don't get a tankless. So we don't care. Do what you want to do. But the upfront costs are high for a reason, because we can do things with these machines you just can't do with a tank. Plus, I want to tell you this. The cost is relative, okay? In most cases, a good tankless is going to pay for itself, and it will pay for its replacement, again, over the 20-year life cycle of it. Tanks just cost. They cost you to put them in, they cost you to run them, they cost you to clean up the mess when they bust and flood your house, they cost you to replace them. You put in a tankless, it costs you once. All right, here's another thing. If you have a commercial project, when you're on a commercial job, the paybacks are extreme. I have seen thousands of dollars a year in energy savings on a commercial job. It's not uncommon to have a commercial, especially a Renai, commercial job, pay for itself in less than three years. That's right, in less than three years, 100% payback. And typically on a commercial job, tankless costs less than tank tanks. And the reason for that is most of your commercial tanks are big, huge, what they call ASME pressure vessels with special certifications. They're extremely expensive, take a lot of rigging equipment to move. When you can take a bank of these and do a school locker room for a fraction of the cost with huge energy savings, all documentable, the engineering departments of 
Renai and other tankless manufacturers can put it on paper and, and show it to you and prove it. So upfront costs are high, misleading yet again. Not fully because it costs more money. That part is true. How much more money and if it's too high for you is your decision. Do your homework, search the websites of the manufacturers, figure it out for yourself. The last thing we'll address is it says tankless units might need more care and it talks about we paid $334 for special valves and a plumber to flush out the water heater with vinegar. Hey, Consumer Reports, you got screwed. I got people in Northern Virginia and DC that charge $150 for that same service, okay? Plus, you already admitted you artificially increased the water hardness to try to scale up the tankless water heater, but you never addressed what happened to the tank water heater. Well, let me ask you this. If you keep feeding these two machines, and you get the error code and you repair the Renat, which you can't with a tank. What happens a few years later when a tank ruptures and floods the house? No consideration of it in your little knucklehead article. Nice hit piece, but I think I've proven this thing's so full of holes, it just doesn't hold water. Plus, you know, I don't know how hard you did this. You say that um, Experts suggest installing a water softener if your water hardness is above 11 grains per gallon. No kidding. If you have hard water that's that hard, it's attacking everything in the home. Not just the water heaters, the faucets, the toilet fill valves. Everything in the house is affected by that hard water. Of course you should treat it. A lot of people don't. A lot of people don't like soft water. Guess what? I'm one of them. I'm running 15 grains hardness. I don't want a water softener. And if you like soft water, get you one. Great. This is not about not having a, a water softener. Some people love them. I just happen to not love them. Not saying don't get one. By all means, get one if you want it. But don't think you have to have a water softener to have a tankless water heater. That's bull. So at the end of this thing, watch it again if you didn't get all of it. I hope I've proven that the Consumer Reports hit piece on tankless just simply doesn't hold water. Check out my other article, Tankless 101, on ProfitablePlumbing.com. Hope this wasn't too long, and I hope it helped you out. Get you a Renai. You're going to love it.